I'm Don Morales. I go to SF State. I'm 21 years old. Hello. Um, <laughs> um, I love playing guitar, drawing, painting, making music, skateboarding, s hanging out with my friends. It's a lot of weird stuff. Uh, you mentioned that skateboarding. Yeah. Skateboarding is a huge part of my life, and I feel like it always will be. Always. Well, Till I die. Did you grow up, like, skateboarding, or when did you get into skateboarding? I, okay, I started skateboarding when I was in sixth grade. So, I don't know how old I was. Maybe 12 years old? So, yeah, I've been skating for quite a while now. Over eight years. About uh, eight years this month. <laughs> wow, eight years this month. <laughs> I was born in St. Luke's Hospital, San Francisco, here in America, America. So your parents yeah. were born in the Philippines, they're Filipinos. They are definitely Filipinos. And they had a really cool genetic test. That's and what they did. <laughs> <laughs> and you were born in America. San Franciscan. And you're also Filipino. I, am, I happen to be Filipino, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what like being a Filipino American in the skating community because you are in San Francisco and Daily City ah uh, yeah skateboarding in Daily City especially great time to be a skater um because you meet a lot of other Filipino people in this uh, um city that also skate I think it's pretty cool. It kind of brings me closer to my to my roots in a way because, for example, there's this neighborhood skater. Um, his name is Madonna. Let's just call him Madonna. And uh, he's this younger kid, way younger than I am. But I, one time I skated in a group with him and he, him and I were the only Filipino people. And he just called me Kuya, which means older brother. I, you know, I felt automatically like, like a role model to him. So that gave me, you know that gave me motivation to set a good example for him and there were times where he invited me to his house which was nice and being at his house i would meet his i would talk to his parents and they would tell me more about the filipino background knowing that i was filipino and they would share they would share a lot of things with me they would cook for me so they would tell me the origin of the dish they would tell me the tradition the culture behind it and i feel like because i was skating i would meet all these other filipino people these Phil Am Americans that were also born here and I could I can under I could I learned more about them and how they interacted with their culture because there were so many different people. There were Filipino Americans who were rocks who were rockers or, or Filipino Americans who really liked art or Filipino Americans who were really into like medical studies or and it was interesting to see all these different American born Filipino, especially youth, to see how they differed from each other and I thought it was really interesting. Well, there's something that's I that's become really evident to me growing up here, especially going to Westmore, which is a high school in Daly City that is predominantly Filipino. I would think that the, I would say that the difference between the our parents and the generations before us that came here, they're really traditional and they kind of want to conserve everything. Like you gotta go to you gotta go to college, you gotta do this. Like this is your Filipino background, and yeah, it is. But I feel like. Um, the Phil the Philam youth that grew up here is way more assimilated into the American culture. We know way more about the mainstream than they do. We know more about the American technology than they do. We know more about the uh, American fashion than they, they do. We know more about everything than they do. And I feel like it's a difference in kind of like perspectives because they do also work in America. They do all these things that are... Um, American institutionalized but we're really assimilated here because we are not we're not born in the Philippines we weren't raised there although we do in a way know our roots f through our parents it's completely different because this is their environment we grew up in have you experienced any discrimination being Filipino in this area um oh well, I think as every person on this earth has probably experienced bullying um I, when I went to uh, 
Well, at West Moy, like I said, it was predominantly Filipino, but there were other ethnicities in there, and you would hear a lot of slurs that, you know, especially people that didn't like you. So there would be, like, you know, from, like, the Hispanic group or something, we're walking down, and I do something they don't like. They go, go back to the Philippines and eat a dog or something. I'm like, eat a dog? We haven't done that since uh, Filipino tribal days, man. Get educated. You're fucking ignorant. Yeah, but some racial slurs. I mean, it's not. That's the kind of discrimination, but not not too harsh. Not not at least around here. Um. Oh well, there's this one. Um, in uh, there's one case where my my aunt is extremely Filipina. Like, she looks Filipina. She acts Filipina. She sounds Filipina. She has a thick thick accent. Her English is completely, like, well, sometimes it's kind of slurred and skewed. Um, as she's, since she came here, she's been working at Burger King. And she's been working there for a long time, so she should be in a, in a manager position by now. But her hiring manager is, is not Filipino. And she... When looking for uh, manager positions to be promoted, it would always be someone of, of a white race. It would never be her because, I don't know, she pro she works better than all of them. She gets the job done. She's been working there for years, and I feel like she should go up in rank, but I, it's not. And they say it's because, you know, they say they don't promote her because she's not ready yet or it's not. I think it's because she's Filipina and she has a thick accent. That's all. It's unfair. Not an extreme, not like a complete severed tie. Definitely, like, if you look at me right now, I'm wearing a baseball shirt, the American pastime baseball shirt, I'm wearing, you know, my fashion, like, the things I do are, they all come from America. Like, skateboarding was made in LA. I love skateboarding. Um, you know, it's graffiti culture, you don't see that much graffiti culture in, in the Philippines, but I love graffiti culture. So I feel like being born here, Assimilation is real, you know what I mean? It's like, I grew up learning how to be American, and I would learn how to, I do learn about my roots via my family and my parents, especially. So it's not a complete disconnection, but like, I can't even speak, I can understand fluent Tagalog, but I can't speak it. It's, it would take, it takes a long time for me to think of a sentence in Tagalog, so I can't even speak the native language, you know? So definitely, there's a disconnect, not a not a complete one, but there is something that doesn't. It's not just. Uh, there's it's a little bit disconnected. Do you think that your family has disconnected a bit from the Philippines because of the slurs and stuff? Not my parents. Uh, well, my dad maybe. Uh, my dad. He he's very into. Um, American culture like he loves the roaring 20s kind of style music um, outlook on life so he's you know he'd make jokes he'd be like oh those Filipinos over there they work too hard like he'd make jokes about them so you know he can he speaks to me fluently in Tagalog though at home so does my mom but I feel like there is a little bit of a disconnect like my cousins are trying to do you know like fashion industry in New York they're not trying to do anything Filipino American related which is I don't know what is a Filipino American related job but I don't know I just feel like we don't uphold a lot of Filipino traditions um yeah it's a little bit of dis disconnect but there's still a huge connection I think I almost owe it almost all to my parents because or my family because if they didn't speak to me in Tagalog or whatever or teach me about the dishes and the foods of the Philippines or stories of the Philippines, I probably wouldn't know too much about Filipino. Like I'd pro like my source for information about the Philippines would probably be like social media, like TFC or whatever, because I've only been to the Filipino Philippines once. So other than that, um, that's my that's my connection to so the this Philippines. Is the yeah, like I kind of stated earlier, um, I think skating community, uh, skateboarding has definitely helped me um, stay connected to my heritage because 
a lot of my friends growing up, they were Filipino and they just happened to, to skate. So I'd spend a lot of time with them because I, I wanted to be people around people that shared the same kind of leisurely activities as me. So after we skated, being middle schoolers or whatever, or even high schoolers, we'd go to someone's house afterwards. So we, you know, I'd go to their house after we skate and I would spend time with their family and their family became family like to me like they would call me anak which means you know child so they would like welcome me as if i was their their kid and and because of that i saw i see this like extreme welcomeness towards other filipinos even from strangers like the first time I, i'd meet my friend's parents they've never even heard of me they'd call me their kid already you know just because i was filipino so it was pretty welcoming and the skateboarding community allowed me to understand that kind of family dynamic that is offered here in America to other Filipinos. Did your family know your family before? Um, both my parents are from the Philippines. My dad's from um, Manila, and then my mom came from a small province called Balanga from Bataan. Yeah, my dad, uh, he was, uh, I think he's the youngest of his brothers. That are still alive at least and um he would try to get money for his mom because it was only his mom and dad back then his dad wasn't really working so he would he would be a newspaper boy and he would sell newspapers around for like a few pesos that was fun he told me uh when he was working he'd have to like jump on buses and like jump off just to get to like crowded populations to sell the newspaper and i thought that was pretty funny that he had to do that. <laughs> I never had to do yeah, anything he, like that. He emphasized so much that when he was selling, um, it would be really, really cheap. So he'd have to share like one egg with his, like all of his brothers, and he, he's you know, and they couldn't complain because if they complained, uh, his mom was really strict. She'd she'd get she wouldn't get angry. She would just be like you know be thankful for what you have. I thought it was really funny how you know, I get complete meals and here my dad was you know, sharing one egg with. <laughs> With three other growing boys, I, I don't, I can't see myself eating one egg a day or whatever. Like, not one egg a day, but, you know, one egg per meal or whatever. Yeah. So, definitely that. Um, Mom, I think her struggle was more like being, because she prided herself in being, like, the top of her classes and everything. Like, the smartest kid in her family, whatever. So, it was, she was in, you know, she had the duty of coming to America to get money to bring everyone over there so i think it was more so her struggle like going to america and then having her mom say all right well you're gonna be working here she had to bring us all over here so yeah i, thought, I think that's probably something that she and definitely struggled with oh yeah definitely i mean as you can see or as you've heard my dad was just selling newspapers and my mom tried to bring everyone um like her whole family to america so i assume that there's an extreme allure that was the united states and there was this whole dream that if they came here if they were able to land here that it would be like a like a really just lavish lifestyle i think I they just were able eventually to accrue enough money to get over here because they didn't come here when they were like teenagers they came my mom was already pretty old when she was over here um so I think they just, they kind of had to work a lot just to get here initially. From there, as you know, what do you know of your future plan would be? Um, I can't say so much for my dad, probably just, you know, just, my dad was never much of a, uh, get rich quick guy. He was, he's, he's always been frugal, so. I don't think monetary gain was necessarily his his goal, his end goal. I think it was just to live a better life than having to wake up four in the morning to sell newspapers in order to eat like one egg per meal. I knew for my mom, of course, it was to bring the family over here. So when they got over here, my mom was lucky enough to meet someone um, that allowed her to get her job that she's working in now. So she's been working there for a long time and she's... She's a really um, authoritative figure in her work, so she was really lucky. And my dad, I know when he first got here, 
um, he was doing a lot of janitorial work because uh, he never finished college. So he did, you know, the small tasks that don't really require much educational training at all. So janitorial services, like sweeping, like security, it's really meager earnings kind of jobs. I don't even, you know, I think my mom was studying to be a nurse. Um, she was a midwife, which is, which were the people that, uh, helped deliver the baby alongside the doctor. But I, I don't t think she finished necessarily. I know she was pre-med, but even if so, I don't think the degrees, um, transfer over to America. So when she came here, her slate was completely clean, so she couldn't just oh, hey, I'm going to be a nurse in America because she wasn't exactly a full-fledged nurse in the first place. So she had to come here and, like, find a new job. So she works at the police department on the Hall of Justice in San Francisco, which is completely, like, a different um, job than what she set out to be initially. Did your dad ever educate you about education? Nope, never. never? Nope. Even to this, right now, during this interview, he's out working at 73 years old. He's still working, yeah. It might be because he really likes it. He's probably a workaholic by now, but yeah, he never finished his edu his education. Well, just like how a lot of other uh, Filipino American parents don't finish their education either. I know a lot of people that um, their parents were also janitors as well, or they're also security guards or people that didn't, you know, have a completed education, and that those were the only jobs that they could get. Well. My, you know, my dad has, we have a big family now, so, and his, his, uh, children, he has a lot of grandchildren now, and I feel like that's completely, no, not, I would say that lives are completely different now because he doesn't have to struggle as hard as he did in the Philippines, he's still, he's still working, but that's kind of his own volition, you know? He he loves to work, so now he's just working. He's not working just so he could eat a few pieces of carrots and eggs or whatever on his plate. Now it's just because for the hell of it, I assume so. Um, and he has grandchildren now, and I see him as lively as ever. And I feel that because his family grew, his family grew so much, he is, he's finally contented. My mom, too. Um, most of the family is over here. Some of them are still in the Philippines, so she's, you know, she's been able to assimilate more so to the American culture. She's listened to the music here, dressed the styles here. Uh, she works in a predominantly white police department, but she is still sending money to the Philippines, but it's not more so where she was trying to provide for her whole family now. I remember her family has stability over here now, so she's still sending money, but I feel like because she's here, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more positive, I think. Definitely different. Maybe positive. Um, I mean, struggles now is, is my dad, he is still working. Of course, it's not just because he likes working. It's, of course, to gain money. That's what you work for. And I feel like um, he wishes that he was able to finish so he would be able to get more money so we would able to live even more leisure like than we are now i mean we're not the poorest family we're not the most rich we're just we're good um i think you know he always um continues to talk to me about finishing college because he knows he doesn't want me to do the same things he had to do um for my mom like i said she's gaining a lot more money now she's in a high position but she still has to provide for her family um her parents both of her parents are in the philippines um her father was just, or my grandpa, was just in the hospital twice this year. So that's a lot of money. And, you know, she had to she had to contact the doctors and she had to talk to them overseas. And she had to deal with all this stuff. So it's, it's really hard for her because her whole family isn't over here. So she has to not only deal with problems that arise with her family here, but as well as the ones back home. My parents did come in for the American Dream. Did they achieve it? It, well, it depends on how you define the American dream. It's defined as a big house with a white picket fence, a nice family, and a golden retriever. I don't have a golden retriever, so no, we didn't achieve it. But what they did do was they came here and they gave birth to me and my siblings 
and I'm not starving to death. I think I'm pretty intelligent. I think I ha- I'm a well-rounded person. I think I'm kind. I think, you know, I, I can live on my own after I finish college or whatever. And I think they developed a really, they raised a really good kid. So I feel like myself and my siblings have the qualities that we need to have our own lives thanks to our parents. So, yeah, they definitely achieved some kind of dream that happens to be in America because it turned out fine. So I feel like being a Filipino-American as I grow up and as I have kids, it's important to tell them about how I came to do all the things that I love and how how it came, how I came to be established here, what my parents had to do in order for me to have a good life and what I'm doing in order for them to have a good life. And I want them to know their access to these things were given to them because they were given to me because of the hard work of my parents and the hard work of their parents. So it, it keeps going backwards, but I think it's important to understand the, the core values and virtues of the Filipinos, which is, you know, being kind to everyone, accepting them as family, uh, helping other people, um, never forgetting about th- uh, Filipinos are very family based. So never forgetting about families, always keeping contact with family, keeping a strong bond with family. So, yeah, I feel like that's going to stay with me my whole life.